Today we're talking about success and how to survive it. Hi, I'm Tracy. And I'm Jessica, and this is She's on Top, the community where we celebrate women. In this video, we're talking with Kelsey Ramsden. Kelsey is ranked one of the top female entrepreneurs in the world. She's an award-winning business mogul, author, and entrepreneur, and she's known as an industry disruptor. She speaks around the globe at places like the Global Entrepreneurship Congress and the London School of Economics and serves as a mentor for the Richard Branson Center for Entrepreneurship. In her book, Success Hangover, Kelsey talks about how after achieving huge success, she felt hollow. She explores why success doesn't mean fulfillment and how what's next can be the most difficult question to answer. Kelsey is extremely candid in this interview, and she talks about how her success actually amplified her feelings of inadequacy, and it turns out she's not the only one. And as a result, she has redefined what success really is. If someone thinks they want to start a business and they, they're kind of on the fence about it, I would say they need to know a few things. Uh, one is, if it doesn't work out, which it may not, how will I handle plan B? So I know that everybody would love to have like, just it's gonna work and follow your heart and everything is great. Um, look, my plan B was I'll work at Starbucks. Great, because I did my math, I knew what my rent was, I knew this, I knew that, I knew if I got enough shifts I could cover, okay, fine, great. Once you have a plan B, that's called a safety net. Now you can try some big tricks. Create an inner circle of trust. Two, three people. Those are your people. Because you're gonna have big decisions to make, stuff to happen. So who am I gonna listen to? So what's my plan B? Who am I gonna listen to? And then what about me makes this unique? And I think that if, if I'm honest, the thing that stops most people from starting businesses is the third thing. Because they really don't know what about them makes them of any value in a differentiated way than anyone else. And I believe so deeply that when a person can answer that question, what about me makes me, you know, being the shop owner, what about me, um, those people succeed. Unless you're a business person, following your passion is going to result in you ruining your passion <laughs> because you're you, know, you love yoga and you start a yoga studio and you lose your life savings you know and I, and so i think you know people are only getting half of the story two things number 1 the person has to be willing to make changes in their business often okay so if you're the kind of person who has a business who is like i'm on the business plan we're doing it we're never changing you're likely to get taken out, just to be honest, because the world changes fast and unless you change with it, you know, it's gone. So the first thing is you have to be willing to make changes. The second thing is you have to be willing to do it often. So future-proofing your business is very much about looking at all of the touch points of your business and thinking about how you can make it 1% better each week. There's this idea of like the mumpreneur who's, you know, um, doing something to kind of support her and her family, but there's nothing called a dadpreneur. And I think that this kind of like undermining of women as business people, that actually really pisses me off. <laughs> um, so the non-politically correct side of me says, uh, Look, I don't think they're any different. I think how they do it is different, but if the, if the purpose of business is twofold, to make you feel a thing and to make you some money, men aren't looking to feel the same things, but they're looking for money. And women are looking to feel some different things. And they're also looking for money. How we do it is differently. Women could potentially improve their financial outlook by doing it a bit more masculine. Uh, but in the long run, I think the female business tends to survive um, to a much rich, richer and deeper extent than the traditional male model. It's what we're all sold this idea of when you arrive, everything improves. And it does. Look, uh, 
you know, not having to worry about making your mortgage payment is amazing. But for me, feeling not good enough, not smart enough, not all the things enough that I've always felt didn't go away. It actually amplified it. It got worse. So at the same time that I was on the cover of all these magazines for being a business maven, I was sitting in my office on the floor uh, with my knees up against my chest, hoping no one would come in and find me because it amplified all the not enoughs. It was very, it was not a good time for me. And uh, surviving that meant realizing that all the things I'd spent my life to build were not the things that were gonna satiate what I really wanted. And um, so I think for me, surviving my success was really about redefining what success was, making it okay to not buy into a lot of the things that people talk about, and building my life and my business around what really drives me. I think it's also important for people to know that at the back of every cocktail party that I go to, there are people who are talking to me about, uh, look, I wrote five New York Times bestselling books. I don't want to be a writer anymore, but what do I do? I spent my whole life trying to be the senior VP of finance at Insert Bank here, and now I have the office, and I don't want to go in anymore. Insert any given success marker, and people arrive and then evolve and find out that there's a whole lot of life yet to live and maybe they don't want to do that anymore. There's a feeling of success. That's actually what success is. It's having a feeling because all of the other things uh, can be bought and sold and I call them plastic fantastic. There's a lot of people running around on credit looking like they're killing it and feeling dead inside. Um, so for me, Success was, you know, I had this stark contrasting moment when I realized that I had been chasing the wrong thing, the plural, and that was when I was diagnosed with cancer. And so when you get the great reminder that life is tremendously short and you are very insignificant in the grand scheme of things, living for what I believed that feeling of success was became really important. Oh, I would have a lot of things to tell her. Um, but the number one thing I would tell her would be just you're a hell of a lot better than you think you are. Like, it turns out you actually know a lot about who you are. You don't have to find anyone. And you can explore a lot of things, but, but the who you are has kind of always been there and that's what's going to make you more successful than you ever would have guessed if you just show up. This interview really affected us, didn't it? Yeah, it really did. It left us feeling really unsettled and it made us take a long, hard look at our own business. Yeah, and as a result, what we've decided to do is discuss it in more depth in our next vlog. So please give us your comments and your thoughts and we'll be sure to include them. And as always, subscribe if you haven't done so already. And if you like this video, give us a thumbs up and share it with your friends. And also please follow us on Facebook and Instagram. See you next time.